in science class this year, instead of using the regular measurement system that we often use in America, we'll be using the metric system. So this set of notes that we're taking today explains why we're using it and a few common units that we'll see throughout the year that we want to make sure that we understand how to use them. The question is here, why do we even use the metric system? The reason is, uh, as scientists from different countries were trying to collaborate together and share information, they started to find that having different units of measurement made it hard to communicate. So over 300 years ago, scientists had this universal system created so that everyone could understand. And the nice thing is the metric system is based on powers of 10. So because it's based on something that's easy to convert, it made it easier for everyone to use it. So a fun fact is that most countries at this point actually use metric measurements in their everyday lives instead of using things like inches and feet or pounds. They use things like centimeters and meters and liters. We'll find out more about that as we go through these notes. The three really common base units of measurement that we'll see over and over this year are meters, grams, and liters. So meters measure length. Instead of feet or inches, we use meters, and then we add prefixes to make them larger or smaller. And just a reminder of what the, de the definition of length is, it's the distance between two points. Grams goes with mass, and mass is how much matter is in an object. Liters goes with volume, and this is typically with liquids. And volume is how much space an object takes up. I do want to highlight the importance of knowing the difference between mass and volume because many times students get those two things mixed up. So if I were you, I would maybe put a star next to these things just to show that uh, you want to pay close attention to the definitions of these so you know how to use them in the future. We'll start out with length. And when we're measuring length, we'll typically use a meter stick when we're in class, and we also might have a ruler that has centimeters on one side while it has inches on the other. So I will work through one example with you, and I'll expect you to do the other two on your own. On this first meter stick, we could say this is a metric ruler because it's kind of small. All of these numbers represent centimeters, and all the tiny lines in between represent millimeters. So what I'll do is have you tell me how many centimeters each of these red lines represents. And also you can tell me how many millimeters. So this red line stops right about here between the 2 and the 3. And so because it's right on this halfway point, this is equal to 2.5 centimeters. Now the way to say how many millimeters it is, you, you could spend time counting every single tiny little line up until you get to the end of the red line or you could simply move this decimal point over one space to represent that you're just gonna multiply this number by 10. And that's what happens when we have conversions between metric units. So two and a half centimeters is the same thing as 25 millimeters. Now on your paper, I would like you to do the other two rulers on your own and then we'll go over this at the beginning of class when we're together next. When we're measuring mass, we'll use a triple beam balance, or you might have a digital scale. And you may have seen this before, but just to remind you of how to read the triple beam balance. It's called triple beam because obviously right here there are three beams. And so what you'll do is add up all of the numbers that the weights point to to come up with your final number. So we'll start with the middle and then work our way out. Um, so first we've got 300. Then we're going to add 30. And then this line is between the 4 and the 5. So again, you'll kind of count um, the, the lines in between. And we end up at 4.4. So when you add all this together, you end up with 334.4. And because this is dealing with mass, we know it's measured in grams. These two other pictures are on your notes. And what I would like for you to do is try these out on your own. And if you have any questions or if you're not sure how to do them, just put a question mark next to them so we can talk about them in class tomorrow. Now, two different ways that we can measure volume. First, if we have liquids, we'll typically use a beaker. A graduated cylinder is usually going to be even more accurate because there are smaller lines and more divisions. So I will do this first one with you, and then we'll have the other two for you to do on your own just to practice. This first one 
we see that this line doesn't even go all the way up to the 10. And one thing to remember when you're measuring with a graduated cylinder is you'd want to put it on a table and then put your face down kind of at the same level as the liquid so that way you're not looking down on it or up at it. You want to get a clear shot at the meniscus and the meniscus is the curved part of the liquid. The liquid actually was going to cling to the insides of the graduated cylinder so you want to make sure you're looking at the middle where it settles. So here we're just past the halfway point and if you count the tiny lines past the halfway point it is two past. So you have seven total and we're going to say these are milliliters because if you if you take a look at a a bottle of soda like a two liter bottle of soda you can imagine that if we had seven of those um, or seven liters it would be a whole lot and we are not going to fit all of that into a small graduated cylinder so typically you'll see those in terms of milliliters go ahead and try the other two on your own and then let me know if you have questions about them Finally, for solid volume, there are two different methods. One is called displacement. That means you'll start with a certain amount in a graduated cylinder. So for this one, we have 20 milliliters. And then you, if there's space, you can drop it into the cylinder and then see how much the water moves up. So we see that the water moves up to the 40. Now, we're not going to say the rock is 40 milliliters because we started out with 20. But if we take those two numbers and subtract them, you'll end up with 20 total. And that would be how much space your rock takes up. Another way to do it would be to use a formula if you have like a, a regular shape, so say a cube or a rectangular prism, you usually have a formula for something like that and you can just plug the numbers in. Now the common unit for this, um, if it's a solid and it's like a regular shape, you're gonna use centimeters cubed to represent the three dimensions that it takes up. And one fun fact is that if I have a centimeter cubed, that is the same space as one milliliter. So those two things can convert between each other. So finally we have a list of um, situations for you to figure out what unit would best match the measurement that's being described. So I'd like for you to try these out on your own and we will check these in class the next time we're together first thing. So make sure that you, if you have any questions you write them down on your notes and we will be doing labs to do some more practice with these measurements in the future.